because of the color of my skin. Well, it, it's not really like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Come again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
knowing that you're black and you have a lot of personal prejudice against you. I see it on the TV and I'm like, is that going to happen to my brother? Is that, is that going to happen to my dad? And I always have that in the back of my mind every time that I'm home and they're not home. Black history is important to me because I have to remember where I came from and I have to remember who came before me. Because you have to look at the things that Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks and uh, Malcolm X did for us black people so people can't treat us unfairly because they feel some type of relief. Because we are yeah. all people and we need to stand up for our rights. There's still discrimination. There's still discrimination in all in all parts of the United States, we should still fight for what we believe in. We should still fight for getting what's right. Amen. Amen. You can put your hands together. Amen. 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 Um, just going even further. Th those are just some intro videos, like they call them bumpers, you know. But um. Just going even further, like, not, I don't know if everyone knows this, but like, I, I double majored in college, but one of my degrees was um, Africana Studies. And um, I, I will say like, well, I initially just took it for the sake of just wanting to learn more about um, people around me or my heritage, my history and things like that. But then I went to make it a major Long story short, I ended up with, I, I, I went to make it a minor, excuse me. Long story short, I ended up with a double major. Um, but I will say though, um, that this helped me to develop the complexities of my thinking about the historical experiences of colonialism and the present day imperial effects on culture, economics, and politics. Not only did we learn about the pioneers that led the, late, the racial struggle but our critical analysis also forced us to focus on the concrete and also the subliminal ways that post-colonial tests omit the histories of indigenous peoples collectively. In addition, we focus on the incorrect representations of colonized peoples in culture and ideology and also the structures of our current historical moment. You know, so in layman's terms, um, history can be broken down into his story, you know. The people who control history, well, hi history was always about who controlled the narrative. You know, if you conquer the people, you would control the narrative by destroying the history books, tablets, and strip them of their culture. This is why cultural awareness is so important. That's right. It gives us individuality. The, the reason why we celebrate Black History Month in the church is because the reality is we're dealing with people. We're dealing with people from different backgrounds, you know. Uh, our goal is to be a multicultural church, but you can't, you know, marginalize a set of people, you know. And this being Black History Month, we thought it was very important to bring awareness to what has happened, you know, the current, the, the problems of our current historical moment and, and beyond, you know. In short, <laughs> Uh, I'm a black man in America, you know? Um, and no, I don't have a victim's mentality. I think that can also be dangerous. Um, but to ignore the harsh complexities of what's going on, you know, in the world would be to ignore the struggle, you know what I mean? That's right. You know, so I, I just um, wrote this today because, well, I wore this shirt today because it says, it says black history is American history. And, um, the reality is you cannot write the American history without black people, you know what I mean? The infancy of this country was built on slave labor, you know? And um, in lieu of time, I won't play the video. I might play it after church, but I was gonna play another video on the black church, the influence of the black church, or why, why it was seen to be such a powerful thing during you know, the rise of Jim Crow, you know? But the church was, a city of refuge, it was a meeting house, you know, but the church in history, not just black people, but throughout the course of human history, the church has always been that that met, um, that that place where people could gather, you know? That's right, that's right. You know, um, they could find sanctuary in the midst of all the chaos that was going on around them, you know? We, we've seen speeches, some of the greatest speeches we heard from Ralph Abernathy, 
Dr. Martin Luther King, all of these different people, you know, um, were done in churches, you know. It's imperative that we really, we really focus on that. It's, it's, we, you can't be ignorant to it, you know. That throughout the history of the church, the church has been so vocal, so why should we be silent on certain issues that affect the people that are in the very church that we serve? You know, so, um, just, I just want to bring awareness to that, and God bless you guys, in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. We want to emphasize that we should always appreciate each other, regardless of color, regardless of ethnicity. Let's always respect, love, and cherish each other. Amen? Amen. 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 Missionary Hill and I will have like just a little a brief skit and I hope you all enjoy. some paintings for the office, you know, we got to make sure that our office looks presentable, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm at an art gallery right now, so let's see, let's see what kind of art they have. Hmm, let's go over here. Oh, well, you, you know those type of people. We don't really associate ourselves with them, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this one's nice though. Wow, I have to meet the artist of this. Ooh, this would look perfect in our in our office. Um, is there a, the artist of this? Can I see the artist? Over here. Um, sorry, I'm not asking for you. I'm asking for the artist of this painting. Um, and it, still me. <laughs> what What about you? I created all the paintings in this gallery. You, you, you? Yes, me. Oh. What's wrong with me? Uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I just assumed that, you know, it was someone else. I. Because of the color of my skin, you don't think I can draw. I can't, I can't create things because of the color of my skin. Well, it, it's not really like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Come again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And see. See. Okay. Okay, so that was just a little skit, but what we really wanted to get into is um, just a rundown of some of the things that black people have invented that we did not know. So we're just gonna go ahead, read one after the other. The first thing that a black person has created, his name is Richard Spice was the automatic gear shift. The second thing is America's first clock, which was created by Benjamin Banneker. Um, automatic elevator doors, Alexander Miles. The blimp, his, he was the first blimp to create the first blimp that had an electric motor and directional controls, John Pickering. Um, uh, the Blood Bank by Dr. Charles Drew. Clothes Dryer, George T. Sampson. Dustpan, Lloyd Ray. Electric Lamp, Louis Latimer. Folding Chair, John Purdy. Ha, ah, yes, amen. Gas Heating Furnace, Alice H. Parker. Wow. Gas Mask, Garrett Morgan. Golf tee, where you put the golf ball on and you hit it off of it. Dr. George Grant. Home security system, Mary Van Britten Brown. Ice cream scooper, Alfred L. Crail. Ironing board, Sarah Boone. Lawn mower, John Albert Burr. Lawn sprinkler, Joseph Smith. Wow. Mailbox. Philip Downing. 
The Modern Lock, Washington Martin. Modern Toilet, Thomas Elkins. The Mop, Thomas Stewart. Yeah, right. The Pacemaker that you place in your heart if you have issues, Otis Boykin. A Portable Pencil Sharpener, John Lee Love. <laughs> Potato. Uh, reversible Baby Stroller, William Richardson. Super Soaker, which is the little guns that you put water in and spray each other. Lonnie G. Johnson. Suspenders. Uh, what's his name? Oh, but it's, I don't see Go ahead. <laughs> but it's an African American. <laughs> <laughs> Thermostat and temperature control, Frederick Jones. Touch tone telephone, uh, Shirley, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. The last thing. The last thing, the traffic light, Garrett Morgan. Amen. So um, I was astonished, as many of you are, of how many things African Americans have, African Americans have created that people don't glorify. We just.